Yeah, talk with Mike and Tom here at Columbus Media Group, First Avenue, Columbus, Georgia. We're talking about spiritual and emotional health in the new millennium, and we're talking with uh, Dr. Michael Baltimore, who is our first expert on Grill the Expert on this uh, this programming format. So my second question, okay. and really we talked about a panel of experts. The panel of experts was me sitting at a Brewster's ice cream. And uh, <laughs> so uh, the second question is that organized religion has long been a cornerstone, if you will, of of spiritual health and and spiritual practice, especially in the Western world, everywhere. But uh, I I think of uh, our traditional uh, religions here in the United States and uh, Europe uh, a lot of times, and there are other other practices. Especially in the West, organized religion is maybe not as prevalent, especially in this new era where people say they're spiritual, but they practice— on their own right so what where are we going with us uh, spiritual practice and uh, what about the assurance and emotional health that organized religion brought and maybe at this point not so much in in uh, in the West anyway well I, I think it may be related to your first question about communication and data and the information and sharing of that information that people who once and had their community very sometimes very small communities sometimes a little bit larger but that that uh, the beliefs and the thoughts and everything sort of lined up and now you're getting these sort of contradictory ideas or different types of viewpoints on spirituality and religion uh, again back to what we just said is sort of coping with that in a certain way and understanding uh, but being open to new ways of looking at things. I think that's a challenge. Um, so uh, this is a very big question, and I certainly want to disqualify myself from being able to, to really give a good answer to this, this type of question, but I, I do believe there's, there's lots of change in the area of religion and spirituality yeah, and the, yeah. the things that people hold on to as valuable to them. I think people are looking and searching in their, in their lives to f- the sense to find that core, to find that, that balance, and to, and to find themselves and, and examine their, their life. They talked about an unexamined life not being. Uh, so, so with that exploration, and by the way, psychotherapy um, is about discovery and explanation and, mm-hmm. and exploration, I mean. To get to the explanation, maybe, but but uh, that's something that we all have to undertake. I think it's an individual quest. I think that's what we have to do. We have to figure out what is is important to our lives. Sometimes we have to sort out things that we just don't believe in anymore, like we used to, maybe. Right. And that's tough for folks because that that ostracize you in some ways from others. But you have to do that on an individual basis, and I really think. That's a it's a it's a worthwhile effort, and you have to be careful that you you don't uh, go too far out and kind of let go of some of those important beliefs that you think are, are valuable to you and the way you live your life. And actually, that's what it's about: just how do you live your life with and and how do you where and how do you use that support that religion uh, brings to people. So any thoughts about why this is taking place now, why this is happening now? I know going back to the Enlightenment and the Industrial Revolution and the Scientific Revolution, there were a lot of questions, and it transformed how organized religion practiced, really, because because some of the things that people believe they were shown through various... Uh, various things that uh, maybe maybe it's different than what you may have originally thought. So why now is this sort of seems sort of wild west and a free for all in a way? Um, yeah, that's that's an interesting way to 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 put it. I, I, sometimes some days I think the whole existence is uh, the wild west that yeah, we do it on, yeah. on multiple levels. Um, yeah, I. I I don't know exactly, but the idea of the industrial age, as you mentioned, but now the technology and information yeah. age, 
Um, we know more through science, and, yep. and sometimes people will pit science against religion, and that I don't find that very helpful uh, from my point right. of view. But the, but the idea is that, yeah, we, we're learning more, and uh, some of the ideas from religion because they're so far in our past that uh, uh, that, that we've held on to, get challenged by a new idea yeah. uh, and new information, and and that's the only answer that I, that I have is that we're exposed to ideas that challenge what we once believed. Right, it's that feedback loop again. It's exactly. expanded, right? Exactly. Yeah. And and I and that that's something that's that's kind of that's life. If you allow me to say that, but that—that's that, <laughs> yeah, right. uh, yeah, yeah. how—that's the thing that we have to figure out and, and give meaning to our lives. Now there are um, theories, and I, when I say theories, I'm talking about counseling and mental health theories that are really change theories to help a person change and improve and work work through through issues. There are some that say uh, life has no intrinsic meaning. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, I remember saying that in class, and students kind of the eyebrows went up, and they, right. they said, and and we had a discussion about the idea that this particular theory says that we give meaning to life. That's it's right. It's what you put, you know, put out and and begin to understand and believe and and carry on in your in your life. So, so many different ways to look at how we under, come to understand who we are. And and um, the existential questions of why, what's the purpose of life, and all those. Right. And I'm not going to attempt to answer that question, Tom. You can ask me a million times. I'm not going to answer the meaning of your life today. Maybe next week. I don't know. Yeah, but there is some comfort in in having an entity or an organization or a boss or whatever sort of laying down the guidelines for you and so when you get up in the morning you know well here's here are the lines this is this is there's some comfort but also you're automatically restricting yourself when you go that route and there's freedom the other way but it takes a lot of courage too doesn't it i i would think so and i i think that the you know the the big questions that i've oftentimes in watching podcasts and and getting information as we talked about i'm a consumer information consumer uh quite a bit and that that people have had these discussions that are very deep discussions about the beginnings of life and the universe and how the universe began and the big bang and god and creation all of those issues and and i think um this that, those examples, I think, are things that have been brought to the forefront that we never discussed before. These are new. Uh, I mean, yeah, these ideas have been around, but I think now we're. It's people are talking about these more, and there are more challenges for people. Uh, there seems to be a willingness, life. maybe, and and that's probably a healthy thing, right? Oh, I think I think so. I think the the uh, the openness to the experience that we have and making sense out of it. Yeah. Uh, and I think Adler was right when he talked about this notion that we give meaning to life and to the things that we do. Right. Um, and w- develop the kind of person that you want to be uh, over over time. And that that uh, that's a challenge that we all have to meet. I yeah. think uh, there's no no way around that. But I think the 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 problem issue, if I may just talk about that for a second, is that. What we we've seen where the the dogma that comes with some religions yep. have conflicted so much. We've gone to war, right? We, we yeah. fought battles. That's right. You know, and it's been going on for centuries. Uh, and even though that uh, Stephen Pinker talked about that there's less violence in the world now than That's ever right. before. He he tends to affirm the. The arc of justice is long, but you know that whole idea, the, yeah. but that it trends upward. Pinker uh, actually has data to show that. Yeah, I, I I think that's amazing to when you first hear it. Like, wait, I see on the news how terrible people that's blowing right. up things and uh, all this crime and uh, and 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 uh, bad behavior basically. But but yeah, he he presents a very different side of it 
uh, <laughs> yeah, the the old the old aphorism. I can't remember who said it, but that life is nasty, brutish, and short. For so many <laughs> eons, that was true, right? <laughs> that, yeah, that, that was true. Yeah, uh, that's a yeah that 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 statement kind of brings you around a little bit there. Uh, but yeah, I'd, so those are. Th- those are the challenges I think that we have to have as individuals. I believe that's an individual quest. I don't think that's a group uh, quest. I think um, I-, I have a different opinion about that than than some about uh, sort of the group and the and getting your ideas from the group. I think it's up to you as an individual to work through where you're at in those those challenges and what what has meaning to you. Um, but that may, that's a very Americanized, uh, way to look at things, I think. And, uh, but, uh, that, that's, that's kind of how I, I see it.